And the Masons call their New World Order project their great work, their giant work. And remember, George Bush Sr. went by Magog, the giant, at Skull and Bones. The biblical Gog and Magog are not giants. They are ill-described forces of evil in the books of Ezekiel and Revelation. The idea of these two being giants comes from British folklore not the Bible. In Skull and Bones, the Yale secret society that the Bush presidents were members of, Bush Sr. does appear to have been nicknamed Magog. However, this has nothing to do with any apparent giantism, since George H.W. Bush was obviously not a giant, but instead had to do with the members' ability to score with the ladies. You cannot assign your own random meanings to things and pass them off as truth. That's just you spewing bullshit. This is serious. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I know. But there were, there were loincloths. <laughs> and here from his son, straight from the horse's mouth. God and Magog are at work in the Middle East. The biblical prophecies are being fulfilled. This confrontation is willed by God, who wants to use his conflict to erase his people's enemies before a new age begins. But the God that George Bush is talking about there is Lucifer. Right, that's his God. This quote from George W. Bush is an attempt to convince then-French President Jacques Chirac to join the Coalition of the Willing in America's war with Iraq that was about to be fought. The quote talks about Gog and Magog as enemies. Bush Jr. was a stupidly devout Christian. This, I thought, was something that was widely known. The giant cedars are mentioned 47 times in the Bible. Hey, look at me! I'm a Christian! I'm reading the Bible! Now we know these trees were giant by particular passages in the Bible. That is just about the worst logic I've ever heard. Apparently, we are now to measure trees based on biblical scripture. That is literally the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Let me handle this. That idea is just the worst. In Ezekiel 31.3, we read, Behold, Assyria was a cedar in Lebanon, with beautiful branches and forest shade, and very high, and its top was among the clouds. The cedars were among the clouds. They have to be pretty tall to be that high. In Psalms 80.10, it states, The mountains were covered with its shadow, and the cedars of God with its boughs. So the cedars were taller and bigger than the mountains. It's such a shame that these ultra-religious flat earthers can't even Bible write. Ezekiel 30 is not talking about a literal tree, but rather using the cedars of Lebanon as an analogy for a once great kingdom, the nation of Assyria. Psalms 80 follows much in the same vein, using the cedars as a metaphor for a specific message about the church. Neither of these verses were written for people to measure tree height with. And you two motherfuckers need Jesus. And notice what kind of man is associated with these majestic trees. In Psalms 92.12 we read, The righteous man will flourish like the palm tree. He will grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Remember Jesus was God's right hand man, of the right, of good, of God. And how does a cedar grow? Tall and strong, bigger than the mountains, reaching among the clouds. Ah, so Jesus was a cedar tree. And here I always thought he was made of crackers. So you're telling me that you believe that Christ comes back to life every Sunday in the form of a bowl of crackers, and then you proceed to just eat the man. The men of Lebanon take after the trees, tall trees, tall men. The people of Lebanon are not unusually tall. If anything, they're slightly above average in height. More importantly, however, what the fuck does the height of a Lebanese man have to do with trees that are supposedly the size of mountains? Nothing! So it's on the flag. It's in the Bible. Where else can we find the giant cedars? How about in the landscape? This gonna be good! The big mountain is called Al-Araz, which means the cedar in Arabic. 
Now why would a civilization dating centuries ago name a mountain after a tree? It wouldn't make sense unless the mountain was a tree, a giant tree that has been cut down. What we've got here is failure to communicate. This jump in logic is so absurd, I wish I could give it some sort of award for dumbassery. I mean, how do you respond to a claim like this? Let me repeat it for you. Now why would a civilization, dating centuries ago, name a mountain after a tree? It wouldn't make sense, unless the mountain was a tree, a giant tree that has been cut down. I don't know what more proof I need. Obviously, there were once trees that were miles tall. Look, they even named a mountain after it, or, I mean tree stump. They named a tree stump after the tree. Does this mean the Andes Mountains were originally giant mint candies? Obviously it does, and the evil Masons want to hide this secret from you. Of course, to protect Big Mint. Andes Candies, the perfect little thank me. This cut portion starts at 1800 meters above sea level, which would be equivalent of a 60 story building. And that is just at the base. Notice how this cut portion is already among the clouds, as mentioned in and throughout Ezekiel. You're crazy, you're crazy, man. You're crazy. I like you, but you're crazy. <laughs>